it is important that I spend a few moments to make mention of the sacrifice in Islam. When we say sacrifice, one of the prime issues that come to our minds, the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, of his son Ismail, may peace be upon them all and upon us. Amen. If we take a look at what happened, according to the narrations, the historic narrations and some of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was a dream, an instruction to a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, to do something that pleased Allah, although it did not make sense to this man. But he knew it was coming from Allah, so whether it made sense or not was besides the point. I have to get this fulfilled because it is wahi, it is revelation. It is from Allah. It is an instruction of my maker. Here it is, and I will get this fulfilled. He was instructed to sacrifice his son. The upbringing of that particular son was such that when he spoke to the son, the son says, Ya abatif al ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do as you have been instructed. Satajiduni insha'Allahu min al-sabirin. You will find me being from amongst those who are patient. This was the upbringing of the child. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to give our children similar upbringing that when the decree of Allah is mentioned to them, they do not find it difficult to surrender to it. Today, we don't read salah and we expect our children to read salah. We don't dress appropriately and we are saddened when our children dress more indecently than us. So, there are two ways, inshallah, to solve that matter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us solution to that. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when he went to fulfill the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan came to him. When shaitan came to him, he pelted the devil on three occasions according to some narrations. And later on, he fulfilled the sacrifice. What we learn is so much from it. One is, Every one of us is taught to engage in that sacrifice in one way or another by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because it's all about a festival of meat and it's all about enjoying eating. It's not only that subhanallah. The celebration is upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upon putting a knife between you and that which comes in the path of earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example. What is the point of someone sacrificing a ram at the time of Eid al-Adha, yet they have not put a knife to the adultery that they are committing for the last 10 years? What's the point? What is your sacrifice? What have you put to an end in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the sin that you are committing? A person lies every day. And yet they want to slaughter animals and say, enjoy the meat. But brother, your sacrifice is to cut your lies. Some people speak rough to their family members. They have no way of communication. They speak to their wives or sometimes to their husbands or their children or parents or in-laws in such a rough way that they can only be pleasing the devil. Yet they will come to you at the time of Eid al-Adha. Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, subhanAllah. Eid is not only about greeting people. No, it is a bigger much bigger issue. It is development of yourself. You celebrate upon the fact that you have put a knife to that which was displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or where it came to the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You made sure that come what may you adopted that instruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We have people who cannot give up pornography. But when it comes to sacrificing, they are quick to put the knife on the ram and say, you know what? We sent 20 animals to Bangladesh and we sent 50 animals to India and we sent another 500 to Africa. MashaAllah, that is very, very good. But what did you do about that animal within you? You have not yet slaughtered it. Allahu Akbar. What about the pornography inside that you are so hooked to? Cut it out, my brothers and sisters. Cut it out and see. How you will enjoy the sacrifice of Eid al-Adha. You are sacrificing something for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People have so much. Some people have really this connection to false wealth that is not theirs. So they want to usurp wealth through robbery or deception. And they get happy about it. Brother, 
I am a very rich man. How did you get your money? If you did it halal, alhamdulillah, we are happy for you. If not, put a knife to it. That money will not come about with any form of goodness. If we're not prepared to put a knife to it, then subhanallah, how will we earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is one angle of looking at that sacrifice. The angle of what am I prepared to sacrifice to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On one hand, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was instructed to do something that did not make sense to him, nor will it ever make sense to any one of us. Imagine, sacrifice your son. Can it make sense to you? No. Did it make sense to him? No. But it definitely was never a point of question because he knew the source of the instruction. Once Allah said, do this, he said, Sami'na wa ata'na. We have heard it and we have obeyed it. Whereas we have light items to fulfill. No one has asked us to sacrifice our children or to do something barbaric in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah. No, but it is the small things in our life that we are not even prepared to look into. How then are we going to be able to sacrifice them, cut them out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope these few words of motivation can help myself and yourselves. Firstly, look into ourselves. Where am I going wrong? How do I work? How do I address my colleagues? For example, some of us, we cannot read Salah. For what reason? Because we are lazy. We want to sleep. Or we say the timing is, uh, is strange. Some of us don't want to dress appropriately. Some of us have haram relations with the opposite sex in a way that we know it's detrimental for us, for our families, for our well-being. But we cannot put an end to it. And yet, we, every year we witness this Eid al-Adha. What is it all about? It is all about sacrifice. It is all about cutting out that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forcing yourself to do that which pleases Allah, such as your salah, your truthfulness, your dress code. Come on, we can do much better with our dress code. The way we come across one another when we enter the house of Allah, my brothers and sisters, we need to learn something. We smile at one another for the sake of Allah because I share a shahada with you. I don't need to come into the house of Allah and look at people in such a way that my eyes are telling them, what are you doing here, brother? You are not even supposed to be here. If that is the case, where is my iman? What is the brotherhood? Subhanallah. What is the sisterhood all about? We need to make sure people feel like part of one family. That is what the ummah is all about. We will have differences and we will always have differences. But my brothers and sisters, remember, those differences to be discussed with knowledge and to be discussed in a way that it is felt that my intention deep down is not to condemn people, but rather to educate them, to come closer to what is right and to do so. It might take long. It's a lot of effort and energy required, dedication and strategy so much. But we are impatient, my brothers and sisters. It's either my way or the highway, as they say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Brothers and sisters, two things were mentioned in today's talk, and I hope we can remember this. Number one, it is important for us to realize the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will never get what we want in this world because Allah has kept a paradise where we will be getting what we want. Expect tests in your life. One day your health will fail. One day you will suffer loss in your wealth. One day you will suffer the loss of life of those around you whom you love most because everyone needs to go. One day you will become old and you won't be able to walk anymore. One day you will have to prepare for dying because you are so close to death. You may look back in your life and regret. When I had energy, I used it for adultery. I used it for pornography. When I could see, I used to watch dirty things. When I could type, I used to type the dirtiest of things. Now that I'm old, what do I do? Remember, if you have got to old age, you are so lucky. The, the doors of Tawbah are still open, but a loser is the one who gets right to death and still hasn't turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us through our tests and to make us from those whom when the tests come in our direction, we can accept them with open arms, asking Allah to help us through them and asking him never to test us with tests that will be too difficult for us to pass. The second point I made mention of is to learn from the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, that if he could put a knife to something in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was replaced with a ram. As we know, we should learn that what we have been asked to do is far easier. It is far lighter. Yet 
we find ourselves dilly-dallying, we find ourselves dwindling, we cannot even sacrifice minor things in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope and I pray we can become better people and I hope and I pray we can become assets to our communities, our societies, starting with our own families and family members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us.